Yeah. And and uh, they made uh, Fun and Ri off. Interesting. So uh, you do? Are you gonna stitch all the vi the videos together for this? I I might. I don't know. I might just do this one. <laughs> so this is the fellowship <laughs> of the link call on Wednesday, September twentieth, twenty twenty three. We are struggling because uh, Fancien is going to give us a demo of the Agora, and it wasn't working on Zoom. So, yeah, apologies for that. I I I, I should test uh, Zoom more, but yes, apparently Wayland and Zoom don't like each other. Yeah, hmm. uh, I will I will yeah. note if you want to stitch the two videos together, I do recommend OpenShot, which is an open source, free to use video editor. It's not useful for complicated stuff, but if you want to stitch two clips together and output a single video clip, it's very fast and useful for that. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Um, also, it turns out QuickTime, uh, as long as the videos are AVI format, I think, uh, QuickTime does a very nice job. You just drop them into a QuickTime video and ex export again. Oh, Actually, nice. FFM I've never pegs. tried that. Uh, yeah, FFM but FFmpegs got well, a lot so the, of... <laughs> the, the trick with FFmpeg is you go ask ChatGPT, how would I do this? And it likes <laughs> right. a long, complicated line. And then you go, uh, cool. You're <laughs> depressing me as somebody who spent a year of their life building an FFmpeg-based audio <laughs> oh. um, tool. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how the universal CLI will come uh, uh, yes. to exist. Yeah. Hey, Samuel. Hello, hello. Hello. So I think well. Uh, so I I can I have some slides I can present just for feedback. I mean, uh, uh, and then you know like any feedback is, is uh, welcome. And of course, questions we can jump to a demo and so on like uh, anytime. Um, so here we go. Sounds great. Can you see these reasonably well? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'll try not to take too long. So you can, but that means you can cut me off anytime. <laughs> and like, uh, yeah, a lot of these, like, uh, it's a, a bit uh, a last uh, minute, and so and for me, just because of like uh, how I prioritize. So uh, these are in flags. So feel free to criticize and tear them to pieces because I'm not uh, invested in that sense. Uh, uh, and so with, with uh, that being said, yeah, these uh, um, these are a base. Uh, let's see. Just like a bit of a, a history here, I guess uh, the um, the Agora project started, which we're going to talk about uh, today. Uh, it started in 2020, actually. And uh, which naming scheme? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so. love the naming scheme for your uh, for items in Google Drive. Everyone should do that. <laughs> yes, I think like readable URLs are actually a big thing. Uh, yes, I agree, actually. And goal links, as you know, uh, are like a key uh, part of that. So yeah, we'll discuss that um, in a bit, uh, maybe. So uh, yes, I mean, uh, the uh, project started in 2020, very late November, and you know, uh, has something running like a week or so. But of course, like that was a, a simple prototype, and since then, it has become like a less simple prototype, <laughs> but uh, hasn't advanced much beyond that. Uh, so this deck, I adapted um, uh, this last week or so. Uh, from a version I did for 2020, in 2021 for I annotate, um, uh, and then uh, you know I kept iterating over it. Um, so there's links to the historical aspects of this, uh, not uh, very interesting maybe. Uh, there's also the our chapter, which is what I yeah, some of you know I, I wrote for this uh, book on um, on social knowledge graphs and, and note taking tools last year. Uh, some of the material here comes from that chapter. And uh, yeah, this year, this is the first time I, pre I present uh, this. So thank you for, like like I said, for your feedback and your attention. I did present like an internal fork of this uh, deck, which unfortunately I couldn't like, uh, you know, merge back because I did it in Corp, so for my employer. Uh, so uh, there was another presentation this year, uh, but unfortunately, you know, a lot of the work there like uh, is siloed. So I, I read it um, uh, uh, for this presentation. Yeah, so, and I said, like I say, like just fire away. Okay, so uh, what is an hour? So I, I like, like you know, I talk about the hour quite a bit. Sometimes not defining it sufficiently. Uh, that is uh, out of necessity, partly because you know it keeps uh, mutating, and you know once you get 
uh, uh, really involved into these projects, you know, they, 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 they can get a scope creep and also, you know, to some extent it ends up being, it has this danger of being everything that, uh, that is interesting. But, you know, uh, I tried like to update the definition to, you know, how I will say it this year. Um, uh, I didn't have some of these wars back in 2021 when this started. So that's at least some progress. Uh, so I will say that it's a, it's a commons. Um, I mean, I almost say knowledge commons. And of course, that it starts as a knowledge commons, but it has aspirations to be like a commons uh, of different uh, different kinds of natures, you know, expanding to the physical. And, uh, you know, uh, because of that, I just say commons. And I say that it's defined by a community, both explicitly and by convention. Um, does that apply to every commons? I don't know. But in the case of the Agora, it applies because um, uh, it has some, uh, you know, uh, actual concrete um, like mechanisms to describe what is in the commons and what is not. So that's the explicit part of it. And the convention aspect of this has to do with the conventions we we all uh, choose to share or not uh, in how we take notes, how we write documentation, how we write a blog post and anything else we contribute to these commons, right? So a lot of that is just based on convention. Yeah, so on the facets, I call out three facets here, which I think we can discuss, we can go in any direction, but uh, so first is a space. So if this is a most uh, a, a wide definition, of course, in that sense, it is that exactly like the Agora, the original Agora, or the one I, I know the most, which is the Athenian Agora. I was recently there this year, and of course, I was also um, in previous years, and I always, always found it very inspiring. Uh, and of course, it, well, it directly influences um, many aspects of, of uh, the vision of the Agora. So it's public, this space, but it has semi-public subspaces. So in the, in the Agora of Athens, those are were called stoas, and are called stoas. Uh, like, for example, like the Stoics, like, like, like uh, you know, uh, uh, met in the uh, Stoa Poikile, and different groups met in different Stoas, which were like these porticos, right? These, uh, you know, semi open spaces where like people could snoop in, maybe, uh, and also join in and like be part of something. Um, and, you know, as a space, as a commons, in this sense, it, uh, you know, in its wider aspirations, tries to. Uh, go beyond the market, precisely like the Agora. You know, it had this market component, it has this public space, you know, like where the commerce took place, but it was not about that only. And that's, you know, the feeling <laughs> behind the Agora of aspiration. Technically, it's also what I guess it sounds like this is a mouthful, but it's a distributed knowledge graph. Uh, so that's very much to the point for, you know, for this group. Uh, the idea is that this is a loosely coupled knowledge graph, like assembled out of the resources that people pull together. So, you know, the, the gist of it, as you will see, is you give the Agora a list of repositories, uh, a list of resources even, like uh, depending, uh, essentially like, and this, those could be a lot, and the Agora would just uh, try to um, import them, like mash them together, find connections, find patterns, and then uh, serve those, right, uh, to the users. And it is also a social network. I mean, this is sort of like very aspirational, no? but um, it is at least a social network in the sense that when we write about, you know, about things, including uh, things and people, you know, particular people, we're writing all the, re the relationships, our positions with other people, our connections, our friendships. And in that sense, uh, any knowledge graph which is about people uh, describes a social network, right? Um, also, the Agora, uh, we, we have like, we are working on this, it's not available, but we're working on the Agora being a part of the favors in the sense of speaking activity power and so on. So in that sense, it will be more clearly like social network. So we're gonna cover some facets of each of these uh, or some aspects of the, uh, these three facets. Um, so, you know, I guess one question would be like, uh, like, and this comes, it's like, why? Why bother with this? Uh, I guess this, comes up for every project, but uh, so this is sort of like a, both a vision and a hypothesis uh, here. Um, so I guess the hypothesis is like is stated um, uh, up top here, which is as of this year, but also probably as of next year <laughs> and like uh, many years after that, um, a lot of the substance of the internets, which I guess you could call constructive 
you know, like uh, the, those which are like, you know, pro-social, I say here generically, but also, you know, like dedicated to building, to uh, finding agreement, uh, to linking, to collaborating. Um, they could benefit from the wider or wider availability of an interlay. And here I, I use interlay in the sense of Samuel, Samuel uh, from the underlay uh, project, right? Which is, uh, we have a slide on that later, but I don't know if you get there, uh, but uh, it's there. Um, of course, it's un, uh, uh, underlay, interlay, overlay um, uh, concepts, essentially this connective layer. And uh, that's very much what the AWAL tries to be. It tries to be like a pro-social, you know, for common good connective layer. Um, and uh, here again, the commons in the sense of like these interlays, uh, there are many interlays uh, depending on how you see them. Um, uh, but it seems like, uh, you know, using again, like uh, the terminology I will use this year, um, as in last year, uh, it, it seems important that um, the governance and the provisioning of this uh, infrastructure um, follow the, the, the principles of, of, of commoning, right? Um, so, uh, you know, community oriented and, um, you know, like it, it actually there's a lot of common theory, which I, I know you're interested in as well. So here um, I will uh, stop speaking, uh, but this, that's interesting in its own um, accord. So the project as it is, it's about developing tools and instructions to put it some way, mechanisms and so on, just to make it more likely that such a connective layer arises with these characteristics. That stops short of trying to be that, the connective layer, uh, because as you, we will see, uh, this agora is probably not good enough and it's more like a, a, like a bootstrap step towards that, or that's what it tries to be, but let's see. So, and then this is a bit uh, long, but here goes um, about why this is important or why we, we have this question, I guess. Uh, for this group, right, for the fellowship, we are interested in, in linking, in, in writing, in sharing. Um, and uh, it seems to me, and it seemed to me back when, when I started the project that, uh, and this is how I found this group, of course. Uh, so, you know, to some extent, I am always preaching the required here, uh, but, it seems like we are uh, the, the note taking communities, wiki, uh, wiki community, uh, web annotations as well. This, you know, this is why uh, we also have connections to um, uh, to a hypothesis and so on. They, these are communities that are in a good position to uh, to exploit an opportunity. And the opportunity is uh, to, paraphrasing. I'm not going to what this slide says. To um, push back a bit against the, well, what you could call the corporate control internet, which is very much sees the internet as a market uh, and maybe stops there very often, right? So essentially reclaim the internet to some extent and uh, maybe build something that is from the get-go federated, you know, works like a commons, uh, assumes principles of, of, of basic cooperation uh, instead of like, you know, uh, just like profit seeking and so on. Um, and a, a lot of the tools and workflows that exist within the node taking and wiki spaces are already decentralized, right? And they also happen to share common patterns so that, you know, even though as they are decoupled a priori or independent, they can be made to work together relatively simply, it will seem. And that's what the project tries to do, find common patterns and try to exploit them, um, it's, you know, what we can, essentially. And of course, the longer vision I mean, these are big words, but you know, why why do this at all? I mean, of course, first because of what we just said about like you know uh, giving an alternative to the um, corporate internet, um, but also you know knowledge independence. Um, if we think about uh, and this goes way beyond the scope of this project, you know, like what we are all trying to do here, I think to some extent is about uh, preserving like the best parts of the internet and of like the knowledge communities and so on for future generations, maybe. So, you know, that's, I guess, one of the aspirations uh, for many of these projects. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll skip a bit over this, but, you know, I think essentially the reference agora that you will see is very simple uh, or tries to be as simple as possible, uh, conceptually at least, and in the architecture. Not necessarily in the UX, right? Uh, there's like a lot of like complexity that arises just from surfacing, just as, as we do now, the graph. Uh, but it's, you know, like a base to work on, let's say. Um, another thing is we do try, like I said, to leverage conventions and formats that already exist instead of like running our own or reinventing the wheel. 
there's an, already too much of that. And also, I'm just like uh, very lazy, and my attention span is short. So, <laughs> so I rather, I rather reuse. And um, and the like I said earlier, a bit earlier, like the core intent is to, uh, and this is written all over the place, but you know, like it's to bootstrap a simple aura to then try to build better ones. Uh, so, and this is where the aura, you know, again, we go between facets with you know, like the particular implementation and the aspirations, you know, and you know, there's a lot of that. Uh, right. So some key characteristics before we dive in. So about what the hour is right now, right? Uh, so uh, the line suggests scale-free design. You said um, uh, Samuel, uh, which is compelling. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. Like you say. So yes, this is the idea where like, to some extent, like, uh, you know, I, I like this, uh, it's like self-similar, no? Uh, right. Right. Um, so... On, on what it is now, so uh, and, and, and you know this tries to follow from the vision you know, or should at least it is free software. All of the hardware is free software, um, and you know a lot of the writing associated with this is uh, um, in um, in Creative Commons, um, and you know it, the free software is targeted towards allowing a, a, any community to build one of these. It's not meant to be like one particular monolithic platform, of course, decentralized. Um, it also try, tries to require little or to actually enter into it. You just need to essentially write the right formats or speak the right formats and point and point the agora in, in the direction of your content and the agora will just take it essentially. And uh, well, you magnet generously. This is like an aspiration again. Um, and you know, like I say, it was inclusive and use uh, uh, conventions, formats, tools, and networks even. For as long as practical, this is like the Agora in 2021. Uh, it doesn't look too different, but it doesn't look different nowadays. And like here, uh, we see, I don't know if you can actually read this, but this is an example of the common, uh, we, will, we will cover in a bit, but you know, the idea that in a particular Agora location, you can see uh, content by different users. Uh, in, in, you know what, I think Ward Cunningham, I was looking into the Agora and like he calls uh, the course of voices, right? Of like also like Fed Wiki and some where uh, essentially we all keep an individual voice, but uh, like share space uh, with the voices. Uh, so this is like, you know, how it was very much from the start. Um, and, um, and well, this is actually the one because we already have all the users. Uh, about the architecture, and this is just like, you know, I, I know some of you, um, um, I mean, of course, like develop software. So you may be more interested in this aspect, uh, but also like, even if you just want, want to run your own hour, uh, um, uh, some of these concepts will be useful. So the architecture is, it tries to be um, simple, but powerful enough. Uh, and this is the aspiration of everybody. So let's see if that works. But like, essentially the Agora, as it is now, has three components. And if you take one, you will take the top one, which is actually not software. The, the top one doesn't contain software. It is a description of what the Agora is. So this is what we call the Agora root. This is, they are all repositories in the sense that these are actually in Git. Um, of course, you could have an Agora repository, um, a repository anywhere, but Git is probably support. Uh, what it contains is a description of the Agora. So, the uh, the list of repositories that will be imported into the Agora. So essentially, you know, in this case, users, in the case of the Agora we have running, uh, this is actually a file that says like username and then like git and so on until you end up with users, as simple as that. Um, and um, also it contains the base contract. We call it contract, it could change, but like essentially this is the intent of the Agora, which is, you know, essentially the, the terms of usage to some extent. Uh, but, you know, giving a community is what the community wants to be or the values they want to uphold and so on, right? Uh, in, in principle, that this is what, this is what, this is, this is the heart of the Agora. Any particular Agora is defined, should we define from these and the repositories that, that are described in, in this route and potentially recursively the pointers in those repositories, right? So. Uh, this is the seed from which the, the Agora is meant to grow like a tree, essentially. Um, so using this uh, root, there are like two, uh, two software components of the Agora. So 
I guess first the Agora server because this is the most visible one. This is what you have uh, running in um, if you just go to uh, say uh, an Agora.org. So this is an Agora.org as of like 2003. Um, it is a, 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 this Python a Flask a, a server that essentially will you can point to an Agora root. And it will uh, be in an actual directory on disk. And it will, you know, like read all the resources, try to find the patterns, uh, agglomerate uh, resources into nodes, which, you know, we'll discuss nodes in a bit, and then serve them to, to the user. So as of the time of writing, we have uh, about uh, 29,000 nodes by 69 users. Um, and uh, this is like uh, the graph of the Agora. <laughs> uh, yeah, Flash is, uh, yes, it's just like a, yeah, I like Flask a lot. It's uh, powerful enough and so on. This is like a zoom in into like, this like, graph is getting quite large. And uh, just for like a sampling of what the Agora contains, these are the more most popular nodes in the sense of like the nodes with the most sub nodes. So we will um, uh, see this in the next slide probably, but essentially, uh, you know, it was, well, I was, what do we choose? Walter Benjamin or Samuel Klein? They're both six. <laughs> In the so I'm gonna go for uh, with uh, Samuel Klein. Clearly Samuel Klein. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here, of course, we have like a, a bug. <laughs> Unfortunately, this used to work, but uh, for some reason, uh, oh. Wikimedia Talk is refusing iframes. Sam. Ah. I wonder I thought, why. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. Uh, I wonder too. But it's you know. I think we can fix this. Uh, here, the node uh, Samuel Klein, and and you know, uh, you will see. Um, has uh, different, uh, so I guess mentions of Samuel, Samuel in different places, some discussion in uh, chat room, uh, discussion in Twitter, discussion in Mastodon. And um, essentially all of these sources are, um, uh, you know, like I said, uh, sequentially presented. Let's compare what was in Benjamin. <laughs> so uh, again, you know, like a note by myself, <laughs> Uh, and by uh, Neil, a great our user. Um, and uh, here we can maybe jump to this interesting book. Yeah, I, I, well, I read Agora a lot, of course I like it. But essentially, now we are in the garden, in the node uh, path of uh, Neil, an Agora user. Uh, in general, uh, this um, is one of the most uh, delightful, I guess, for me. Uh, um, uses of the Agora. I, I very often go to, into the Agora to find a note I wrote, the, and then I find a note that someone else wrote, which is better. <laughs> so to some extent, uh, that's uh, yeah one of one of my favorite things. Um, yes. So we are going way more into the demo now. Going back to the architecture, this was Agora Server doing this work um, and serving it to the user. On the other side, we have our bridge. So this is a, a separate repository and component which reads from the Agora root the description of the Agora. So, so in, in particular, in the case of the Agora of Lancia, these 69 users that are linked, and then imports the other resources and keeps doing this and updating. Essentially, um, uh, once you import a, um, a repository into, into an Agora as a user, uh, it will be pulled, and uh, every 30 seconds on average uh, nowadays, uh, after you submit any changes to your resources, it will be imported. And here you can see that uh, these repositories are actually like Git as well. Uh, and of course, this goes well, well, well with Massive Wiki. And this is why we also have uh, already like uh, Massive Wikis into the Agora, in, in Agoras. Uh, but they also support social media, uh, which we will discuss um, uh, shortly. So um, maybe the one key concept, and this is where like we break the metaphor or like we mix metaphors. Uh, so the Agora has toas, like uh, like we saw, you know, like uh, like I mentioned, and we will uh, discuss in a bit. Uh, but the key thing is the node. The node, this is a representation where uh, it's essentially this entity, higher level entity, which contains resources by all the users that contributed something to, that is about that entity, right? So, you know, Walter Benjamin, we saw, had like two takes, one uh, by myself and one by, uh, by Neil. 
Um, and in the case of, uh, of Samson Old, there were like sources from all these uh, the different social media and chat, right, in different files. So they are going to aggregate these into this uh, higher level node concept. Um, and this is where like there's a difference maybe, um, and we try to explore this between, you know, if, if you have a digital garden or a, or a massive wiki, you link from node A to B in a massive wiki. Um, the Agora will actually see that link and then link A and B at the Agora level. So then essentially it only, it, it so links are social. If a single user says, I think uh, A and B are linked, the Agora is like, sure. <laughs> so we just have like an Agora level link there. And, you know, as you navigate, you will see the links by everybody essentially. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, well, this is uh, just the page we saw. Um, which actually points to every node. Um, and some patterns, I guess, you know, what, what is in the Agora? Because, you know, we import different repositories. We have digital gardens, the majority, but uh, not uh, uh, the whole thing. We have blog posts because some people, uh, there are some blogs that are imported into the, into the, the Agora. The, and I'm always talking here of the Agora of Flancia, which is the first one uh, as, as such. Um, uh, we have uh, personal wikis, very similar. We have journals. Uh, so, you know, like, blo uh, which I guess is like blogs anchor to um, date. And um, I said no club in the sense that, you know, this is something that happened in Agora Flancia. Some people started saying, oh, let's all agree to a node, you know, uh, fellowship of the link, for example. You, it's a conversation. Once you agree on an Agora, you can say like, you know, like a name, like essentially like a, or Agora slice, just like, the, Pass, a, pass over the air like a concept, and that is enough to start coordinating. Uh, the, uh, right, uh, right. Uh, you are gonna say, exactly. It's like a, precisely like saying let's hash, let's use this hashtag for this conference. Um, and uh, of course, you can. Uh, uh, nice of you to mention hashtag. Of, of course, uh, the integration of social media works with hashtags, where uh, you can opt in and then essentially. Um, Essentially, what the Agora tries to offer once your uh, repositories are integrated into the Agora is you can hashtag anywhere, and the Agora will incorporate uh, all these resources into the whatever you, uh, these hashtags you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so we have Stoas as well. So Stoas are just these um, semi-public spaces I mentioned. Uh, so they can be shared documents, a video chart space, or uh, like a group wiki page. So if we see, for example, um, let's see. Uh, so here we have um, the actual, um, this is the actual node for the Agora slides I'm presenting. So uh, here, I mean, this is actually empty, I think as of now, yeah. So you can say, uh, well, I want a hdoc, and then you type here. You don't, this doesn't need uh, signing or anything. It's actually completely anonymous and anarchic. So anybody on the internet can go to any location in the Agora and start writing, essentially. Uh, and this will actually show up and be incorporated into the Agora within 30 seconds or a minute of, of in written. Like you know from the meeting notes from the, for this meeting. You have an Etherpad as well uh, for like, you know, it's more colorful and a bit nicer as chat. And you also have a Jitsi, which I wonder if this will actually, uh, yeah, I guess. Oh, here I am again, I guess. Uh, so essentially, we're about, we're about to fold into the time space continuum. So beware. Yes, yes. I mean, let's, yeah, let's do this towards the end, maybe. Yes. <laughs> 50 minute adventure. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, the idea, I mean, this is where like, it's just like, a, a, you know, UI exploration, but uh, I want a server, and this, I'm just a big fan of transclusion uh, and of iframes, the, <laughs> uh, which are the easiest way to do transclusion ever, maybe. Um, and uh, the Agora tries to really just run with it. Um, so this is another example. For example, in the Agora slice, uh, we have the new version, which I'm presenting, and we have the old version, which is from 2021. And uh, in this case, I'm doing a pool. A pool is like, like essentially telling the Agora to do transclusion of this other node. Uh, this is because uh, previously uh, this slide there was a fork, so I had a different node for it. And then this means that within our slides, the Agora will present our slides 2023. And essentially, yeah, here I have some notes about uh, stuff I wanted to say or add, and I didn't get to. 
So if you want to see like the like the uh, intention between the slide they look going forward, uh, these are the notes about the slides. Um, and essentially, uh, this is this is the experimental UI of the Agora Flans. Essentially, where like transclusion is uh, around to eleven, I sometimes end up using the Agora three or four levels deep. <laughs> is that a good idea? I don't know. I like it. But this is where like feedback and you know like uh, expanding the agora to uh, more users will really like uh, help. Uh, here, for example, we see the kind of like uh, graphs that the agora. Um, these are local graphs. It only shows the vicinity of this node. So here we can see uh, uh, essentially. I'm just clicking on and so on. Well, I think I, I wrote. Yeah, I, I wrote that. Uh, and here we have all the mentions. It's like just full text search. So this is essentially the extent of what our server provides. Um, uh, as, 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 uh, as it is now. Uh, yes, and I show the stoas. So let me quickly go forward. Yeah, I show this. Right, how do you join an hour? So join an, there's joining an hour and there's running an hour. Uh, a lot of what we uh, discuss about, like, you know, hour bridge, hour server, the root, they, it has more to do with running your own hour, which is definitely like something we want to make easier. And we have been mostly investing, um, by we, yeah, I mean, in this, uh, I have been doing mostly. Uh, trying to make it easy to run Agora's uh, has been a focus this year in particular. Uh, and this is why we have others now. Um, but in the sense of contributing to an Agora, you go to an Agora, you get this page. This is the, unless someone change this, this is still, yeah, exactly. This is still, um, <laughs> this is like actually representative. So this is uh, the empty, this is the 404 of the Agora. Um, which just says like you know start writing essentially. Oh. Uh, you can visit any any node and you will get this, mm. uh, and it says you know what you can do. Uh, you can join, which means you know you need to have your blog or your garden wiki. This is like for like maybe power users you could say uh, you know, but precisely you know the target of this audience right maybe, and then contribute the um, the, the garden to an hour, or you can just post from social media. Uh, and chat actually. So we support the favors so Maston and Matrix. That means you need to find an Agora bot, follow the Agora bot or add it to a room, and then you start wiki linking and you're done. Uh, it will be uh, imported, uh, it will be cross posted to the Agora, whatever you write. Uh, or you can write in a STOA. So, of course, anywhere you can just pull the STOA and like go um, if you are fine with Anonymous. Um, about that, you know, how to do, uh, join as a power user. Well, I mean, in general, the flow looks like this. You know, this is like you can take notes, whatever you see, whatever tool you want. Then you need to get into it somehow. Uh, we also are uh, trying to, uh, we have in the plan, which is in the hour, by the way, hour plan. You go to our plan in the hour and you see all the <laughs> stuff that will take you to do probably. Um, um, so we, we want to support like Google Drive and Dropbox and so on, um, yeah, or iCloud, I don't know. Uh, but for now it's Git, Git is the game. So take notes, get them into Git, tell an Agora, and uh, that's it, essentially. Once you do that, it's one time setup, and then the Agora will just keep getting your notes. Of course, this works mostly for public notes. Agora editors, I guess you know, I mean, this is phone, which I was using in 2021. I don't know uh, what you use nowadays. Uh, I know, well, I know for some of you, um, everybody has VS Code. And here, uh, just a bit about uh, going back to the convention. You know, we, we, saw, we saw architecture, the fourth edition, the architecture, the actual like uh, software components that, that are at play, uh, but we didn't cover the, uh, the actual conventions. Essentially, and here we could do a, a, either of these first. So we have so Wikilinks everywhere was one of the original motivations. Uh, Samuel will remember, um, and you know the idea is like you know how powerful uh, Wikilinks are. Let's see, essentially how far can we go by agreeing on just one thing, maybe. So and that thing being a particular convention for saying this thing links is related to another thing. You know, weekly is being about entities, being like having this semantic information, right? So um, yes, essentially like hashtags. Hashtags are also supported now in the Agora, but uh, weekly links are still like how, how I started and what I use most of the time. 
Uh, of course, they are also supported by, well, most wikis, that's the name. Um, and um, the idea is that, you know, like, okay, so you agreed on a syntax, say you, you, you're going to write double square brackets when you mean I want to link to this particular thing, whatever that is. The Agora, what they try to do is I build on that and say, well, you agreed on one thing. If you agreed on a second thing, which is an Agora, then any link that you don't know how to resolve, you can just ask the, that Agora by default, right? So um, essentially, uh, in, and, that, and then you can use that, um, you know, in different um, uh, tools and, and workflows. For example, if, if Massing Wiki, you have a non-existent page, you, so you want a, you have a red link. I don't know if it's red in Massing Wiki, but you know, uh, you know, you link to a page that you haven't written yet. If that wiki is part of an Agora, then following that page, I, you know, beyond saying like, here's, you know, you can write the page now, can show what, if anything, what is the Agora. So to some extent, it's like a catch all, the Agora for links that are in anchored. Um, uh, and this is essentially, uh, you know, the, the first intention here uh, that uh, precisely because, you know, I, again, like as a person who like write a lot of notes, but they're, you know, like very often like leaves them hanging uh, the links. Uh, I just really wanted to see what happened if like, you know, we all made that jump. We all as in a, a group of people made the jump of saying, when I write a, like Wikileaks X, if I hadn't said anything about this, you can just refer to my friends. Whatever my friend thinks, uh, think about X, whatever the fellowship thinks about like weekly links. Well, if I hadn't said anything in particular, you can just, I, I trust the fellowship to define it, right? And, and this is where like, you know, interacts, this intention interacts with uh, a lot. Uh, oh yeah, exactly. Uh, a, a lot like um, uh, just agreement. So Samuel says uh, he would like to see a list of repositories in the Agora and which ones have a note for a given wiki link. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, so users, uh, actually, this is uh, pretty light on information. These are uh, 69 users in this Agora. Um, it would be nice to, uh, so so for seeing which ones have a note for a wiki wiki link, that's just missing the wiki link in the Agora. So for example, if you want to see, uh, I sometimes use Flaner as a, as a, as a default you know i mean by definition the gardens that um or the repositories that have flaner as a as a sub node are the ones that show up in the node so it's here we know that neil has flaner right which is by visiting flaner um and so on right so um here we have like an example of a pool where like you know we get something from Baudelaire in flaner uh what it is as usual like i uh, just post around random stuff and uh this seems to be slow but should work uh, what a but what i also would like to see and we haven't implemented is uh, showing this overall hour graph but only the the ones that you know um have um, overlap essentially uh, and per, perhaps even coloring the graph uh, uh, per user so you can essentially see which parts of this like huge graph, uh, well, this is really hanged, but uh, it should work. Uh, which parts of the graph are actually shared, right? Uh, yeah. So this uh, about the oh right about the protocol. Just closing. Our protocol tries to build on top of the weak link uh, and other conventions that you essentially you are just textual. So essentially, once you have the weak link and you're in Agora. What can we do that is just a matter of writing the right thing, essentially? Uh, and this is where, um, essentially, uh, like I said, you know, like what we, use, we have links, we have hashtags, this with some wikileaks everywhere. And right now, it has very few other things, essentially. It has the notion of uh, composing nodes. So essentially, you can uh, have nodes which uh, have special behavior. Uh, uh, and one of the examples here is uh, Go. The Go, this uh, Go links, I, uh, you know, that are, for example, in the um, uh, uh, other mechanism that you can use to jump easily to this slide deck. Uh, 
Uh, so this just means if you write go as a weekly link or a hashtag uh, and a URL in an node, uh, then go full will send you to, uh, as a redirect to that node. As simple as that. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think I, I mentioned Go links before. I'm a huge fan just because I've seen several groups where like just agreeing to use this uh, it goes a long way in re reducing friction towards collaboration, right? So the algorithm tries to capture this and generalize it, maybe. Uh, pull and push, they have to do with transclusion. I think we are out of time, so I, will, I won't go deeply into this. But essentially, that means, you know, if you're on a node in, in your wiki, in your brain, and you're like, here, I essentially, I already wrote this. I, I would like to, whenever I, whenever I see this, I would like to see the, uh, that other thing. You can just pull, which is like a hard link, or like a strong link, which is like, just bring it here. Right, it's just essentially the intention of transclusion that we saw. And push is the, it's sort of like the inverse of weird in the sense that when you push to a different node, you are transcluding this node in the other one. You're sort of like writing at a distance. Uh, yes, and here, well, okay, almost on time. I don't know, I have no plan, so I'm gonna say almost on time, completely unwarranted. <laughs> is uh, the end of like what, uh, you know, the slides that seem really more interesting. Uh, and in general, if anybody wants to, uh, to see uh, more of these in depth, you can go Agora chapter in the Agora. And anytime you see go Agora and like uh, Agora dash, you can just write a space there or a plus or a dash and it's the same. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Samuel. And every, every, every one of, of you for your time. Before we go further, I'm going to suggest we pick up on this next uh, yes. next Wednesday as well, if you can make it. And I think we can keep going. Uh, I can hang out for a bit. Um, oh. So anybody who needs to leave, know that we'll come back to it. Um, Thank are you, you. Are you ready for questions? Yes. Thanks. Thank anybody you. who wants to, please jump in. And if nobody will, I will. OK there. I'm waiting the requisite five seconds. All right, so I am not a coder, um, but I am an intense user of some tools. And I love what you're doing. I love your language. I love your intentions. But I have to say, I could not explain this to somebody else right now, yes. nor could I use it. Oh, good. Yeah. Samuel's back. Eh. Um, yes. So, so that's my problem is that when I, when I've listened to something for 45 minutes and I can't explain it to someone else, there's something slipping, there's something slipping in the explanation. So yep. I kind of feel like I need a layman's summary, or I need to paraphrase what I think it is and have you go, yes, yes, no, no, uh, to, to get closer to what the thing is. Cause I, I really don't know how to explain Agora to someone else. And I think that everything you're doing is stuff that I want. Thank you so much for that. So, so let me maybe like phrase it and let's see if this helps. Uh, probably won't, but here goes. So I, I, I usually start nowadays in short to say like the Agora is a free knowledge commons, right? Which of course is very also abstract. And then the next, the next one will be, right? The next one will be the Agora is just an agreement that um, it's, it's an agreed upon default place. So when it, if you the idea is that and this is where whether whether you believe on this is like it remains to be seen. This is the it's like it's a, a default place. So if you agree on a default place with your friends or your group, then that lets you do things more easily. Essentially, I'm gonna you've just you've just tried to explain the agora for 45 minutes. I'm going to challenge the other people on the call to explain it to us and see if that works differently. Because <laughs> you, you, oh, they're sweating now. Because you you've done your best. Um, I think so far, and you've and you've done a lovely job. Um, but who else would like to jump in and explain this? Please. Okay, I'll give it a try. Yes, um, I have Aram to, gets I have to point. draw. Um, I have to drop soon, but um, I'll give it a try. Uh, as I understand it, it's a machine that aggregates data from any number of uh, resources that match its expected format and link them together and provide displays in which you can see both the linked data in place and the links that form 
from those places to other places. Um, in this sense, it is a machine that aggregates content from multiple sources, connects that content using its own logic, and enables participants to connect to each other um, through wiki links and tags. That was amazing. Can, can you, uh, I, I will call you in, in a blurb. <laughs> and we have a recording of this, so you can use it. Once <laughs> yes. uh, what would you yeah, change? Yeah. What would you change or correct from what Aram said? That's that's pretty pretty strong, actually. Uh, I mean, I think the that that's pretty much it. Maybe if I added something, it won't be to correct, but rather just like to add about the in, the intention. I mean, for me, the intention behind the Agora is like what I haven't found elsewhere uh, maybe i just found it but like and that what led me to actually start building this machine which is like you know a, essentially setting up this interconnectivity developing the tools so that people can link into the agora in particular from wall gardens right and uh, use that interconnectivity to you know drive projects find solutions to problems uh, build essentially like uh, maybe use this machine to uh, to build pattern languages. So um, this, but this is on the on the on the praxis or pragmatic. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Anybody else want to take a swing? Okay, I'll try. Yay! Uh, and I think that there are multiple. Uh, one of the challenges for the explanation, I think, is that. The idea of an agora as a shared space has led to a number of separable things that mm -hmm. all have that name. And one way to uh, clarify that is to have a family of things with agora at the beginning, like an agora commons, an agora environment, an agora resolver, and so on. And so I, I like I like the diagram that shows the agora server and the agora bridge. Uh, so maybe one of the things that we can one of the bits of feedback we can give back is to say here are a set of, of nouns that are worth describing more that are that have two word names. Mm -hmm. um, but for the agora as a whole, I would say it's an environment for um, streamlining the sharing and the contextualizing of links across um, a universe of documents intended by the participants to be shared with one another. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, yes, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Streamlining environment. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and um, thank you for the feedback. Yes, I'm definitely like our commons, for example, is a, is a key key concept that is not mentioned anywhere. Uh, although we say our is a commons. Uh, that sort of like maybe makes it more opaque than less. But as saying like the Agora, you know, this such a thing as an, uh, the Agora Commons and it has a components. Yes. This, this may be a really bad analogy. It just just occurred to me now, but I, I I'm I'm looking I'm sort of reaching for analogies in other realms entirely. Um, so there's a, a things called switches which you attach to um, automatic weapons. Uh, like there's a Glock switch, which is a really big deal right now. It's a very small piece of equipment. When you attach a Glock switch to a Glock, it turns it into full automatic fire weapon. Uh, it's a tiny thing that basically mm -hmm. holds back the, the, the hammer and does whatever. I don't know what it does exactly, but it converts um, a single fire weapon into an automatic fire weapon. It's like a little power, a tiny power tool. And, and the analogy I'm reaching for here is, and I may be entirely wrong about this, that Agora is a set of sort of tools and protocols that are intending to build a commons that you could bolt on to other tools, giving them superpowers of vacuuming up and synchronizing links and information across different bodies of work. Um, and it tries to do that with the intention of building a commons. It tries to do that by picking up the most commonly used uh, kinds of document and link. It tries to do that by creating a, a vocabulary only when it has to for how to do that. But the intent is to, to do that. So I, I'm, I, use, uh, I use Obsidian and push to massive wiki on GitHub all the time. And my next question kind of you know, for next week, I think, is 
what do I bolt on to the vaults or the repos that I have going? Uh, you know, and, and Pete, is there is there a massive wiki component that could be an agora component that could be just a, a configuration switch that says, yes, please uh, share my uh, share my massive wiki content promiscuously uh, through the agora. And I, or, or am I misunderstanding it? And the reason I said earlier it's a hypertext catfish is that catfish are kind of bottom feeders. And I was, I was, I was thinking that what you're doing is like right. feeding on the, the, the hyperlinks that fall to the bottom of the commons and picking them up and going, look, 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 this was set over here. So again, yes. I'm, I'm, stressing, right. I'm, I'm stressing and stretching for, for metaphors and analogies. I mean, yeah, I think you did amazing. Those were like three different uh, metaphors or takes, and they and all worked. Fortunately, so catfish it's... cannot use a Glock switch, or we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, yes, I'm happy to discuss integration uh, next time without taking a little more of your time. But yeah, definitely, Ophi and Git exist, and it can hook to I think maybe you're using that for Massive Week already. Uh, and if not, uh, that's the recommended way of integrating OC at least. Uh, which one? OC and Git. Obsidian Git. Yeah, we are yeah. using we are using Obsidian Git to push to Git Hub. Right. Yeah. I. Yeah. Massive Wiki, or maybe it's the other way around. Uh, Agra is, is it's just Massive Wiki compliant. It, they just work together. Yes. Oh well, are they compliant I, because well? Uh, so Pete, I, I love I like that statement. In one sense, they're compliant because they use very similar prim primitive moving parts out there, uh, links, markdown, a couple other things. But from what I can think of, Massive is not designed to be promiscuous. Massive is designed to create lots of different uh, repos, vaults, uh, wikis, spaces. But there's no—I don't know that there's code in there to um, to synchronize across them on purpose to create the bigger commons where. That seems to be Flancian's primary intent, where the rest of the things that Flancian is building are as duct tape and, and, and bailing wire and spit as possibly could be. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, yeah, the intent to integrate is core, yes, in for that one about the beat. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference between those two was, Dre, but, but maybe let, let I, so I think I would rather not try to describe the whole Agora because it, it for what it, I mean, I, I appreciate the, and each of those uh, third party uh, uh, explanations was great. But, um, but what would be more helpful for me, I think, is uh, I, I loved uh, SJ's, uh, you know, it, it seems like you have a, a bunch of little piece parts here that are kind of all Agora. And if you name them separately, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I would love to have, it, it feels to me like there's about 15 things that all work together to make the Agora. And I find that I can't understand any one of them very well because I'm trying to capture all 15 of them in my head. So for me, what, what I would be interested in is having all the little piece parts and understanding what they do, how they work, um, like just at atomically kind of. And then I think the way I understand things like this is by understanding all the piece parts and then constructing the map of how how all they how they all work together or what they do in my head, um, because all the explanations to me sound like they're they're abstract and they sound great, but they they don't actually instantiate any understanding in my head. Makes sense. Thanks so much. Yeah. Awesome. So it's so that will that could be like a more detailed architecture diagram and maybe just like an explanation for every, each component with a better name. But also na renaming the components so that they form yeah. an architecture of sorts that yeah. they can follow. Um, and and you then you can you know in your head you can grab this part um, yeah. the Agora server. Yeah, yes, yes um, and the intention of course is that you know for example like the Agora bridge you can use for other purposes, right? If if what you want is to like import the data from one of the supported sources, it could be used as a off the shelf tool, but that's not that's not made at all clear. Yes, currently. Yes. Cool. So thank you, um, David. Michael, any thoughts if you want? Yeah, I mean, uh, going back to your original piece of feedback as a, as a non technical non coder, most of this 
I could I could look at it and say I get what the intention is. I think this is really cool. I can't really understand. I mean, my my biggest my biggest challenges are okay. What's the you know consumer friendly UX here and and could it be that somebody could be using their choice of information gathering tool whether it's the brain or doctor or instagram and from there you know very simply tagging something and having it you know ha having what's going on in the agora in anagora in the background to them but manifesting mm -hmm. itself in a in a much more um user friendly you know yeah ui um and i'd be curious to yeah i'm i'm equally challenged with um for a long time even trying to put a word around what was happening and um i i i think when you come to the welcome page um it tells me what but it doesn't tell me why mm -hmm. why would i come here why would i connect why would i leave notes here i think over time I kind of got to the idea that um, the Agora is a machine that's going to attempt in some way to collect information that I might not otherwise know about. Maybe it speeds that collection. Maybe it, it helps, it finds in different areas. But but I think, and, and then, at some point, there's got to be uh, what I call my wife's UI, meaning anybody could come to it uh, and walk around in it, right? Um, I personally even think, and I'm a huge user of the brain and user of many different note-taking apps, even at the brain level. If, if you haven't been using it for a while, um or you ha if you don't use it uh, it's hard to find what you're looking for or mm -hmm. even just wandering around so i i i think you have to tell me why i want to be here and and what i get for being here thank you makes that makes complete sense yeah yeah completely there's another yeah. Con conversely I, I would say i i find myself understanding the why just being intimidated by the how yeah uh, so you know i mean but i understand the why not from the welcome page but from what you've said and what what i've heard you say before um it, it's 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 but the how is really a roadblock yes. to me. thank you thank you and and the index actually yeah it's actually not geared towards this it's an experiment in what happens if you give the index of the site to the community essentially so everybody yeah. just has just this French then so yeah. one thing one thing that might be helpful is a, a, a two or three short use cases that mm -hmm. might yeah. just be videos or screen captures with your voiceover but I need I need to sort of see what are the insights I would get from feeding this or connecting my information into the agora what would it what would it tell me that would be super useful that i would be like damn i can't think of another tool that would have told me this was happening and this right, is right. helpful to my quest to understand blank but but just um that's what i don't that's what i'm not intuiting or seeing which would, right, make, right. Which would like, make me then yeah. go oh okay so in order to do that it would have had to do this this and this and that then i'm thinking architecturally how it might have done that which is taking me down where where pete was asking Right, right, makes sense, and also potentially showing the value if it actually is worth doing. Yes, like user journeys, essentially. Yeah, completely. Yeah, completely. But the, and just short vignettes, just like all I really want to see is the little aha. I want to see the light bulb turn yeah. on in my head, and then we're good. And you could do that in a minute if you had kind of the 
the the setup yeah yeah thank you so much this is all like a uh, goal essentially <laughs> um, so uh, i really appreciate it sweet anybody else with uh, thoughts to add or shall we fold this call and then reconvene and i think it's nice that we'll have a week to think about this and and so forth as well Nobody's speaking up, so I'm thinking we fold and reconvene. I think we fold. We good? Good. I'm thank glad you Jitsi, so much again. I'm glad Jitsi was finally friendly. Uh, Flancian, thank you so much for this. This was super yes, interesting and useful. Yeah. Yes. Really appreciate no, it. I mean, more useful to me, and I thank you for your time and your patience, and like your feedback is really like, it's going to just steer this. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.